Hello, welcome back. Thank you so much for being here. Today we are going to be testing out the new Danessa Myricks Lightwork Volume 6 Freedom Palette. So I am so excited for this one. I have never picked up one of the Lightwork palettes before and I went back and forth on this one so many times. So this palette retails for $128. This is a very pricey palette. This is available now at Sephora and on the Danessa Myricks website. I believe it might also be available at Beautylish. This does have a 12 month shelf life and it says that it is designed in the US and made in China from international ingredients. Danessa Myricks typically does release these lightwork palettes every year around this time. This is kind of like her big holiday launch and they do typically come in cardboard packaging. They're very colorful. She does always have a lot of different formulas and I don't normally pick them up because they are very, very pricey, but they are also very colorful and I just don't play with a lot of colorful makeup. That being said, I have been getting more into indie brands and kind of experimenting a little bit more over the past year. And I do tend to review everything from Danessa Myricks, so I thought now is the time. I almost didn't, but I couldn't stop thinking about it, so I figured I should just try it out. So she does come in this really large box. It is quite thick as well. And then on the top, you do get this QR code. If you scan it, it will bring you to YouTube and to three videos that she has showing you how to actually use the palette and the product. But this did come wrapped up in so much packaging. She did not want this product to be broken. So I do think that she did an amazing, amazing job with packing this one. But this is what the actual palette looks like. It is also pretty thick. And then when we take the top off, we have the color story. So I am going to pop up some B-roll. I did show you all of the different configurations that you can do with this palette. You can pop out this little badge on the front that has Danessa Myricks and the name of the palette. And on the flip side, it does have a mirror. It is also magnetized onto the top of the palette. The lid is also magnetized to the base of the palette so it doesn't flip open. It is just a magnet. From there, you have the beautiful color story. And these are kind of arranged in families of six so you can take them out you can take one of the six with you you can stack them and then that little name badge with the mirror actually acts as a cover for them because it's all magnetic you can also take each individual shade out of the pan and move them around as you wish you can also take out one of the palettes of six and you can add in your own individual mats if that's what you want to do the options with this palette are honestly endless and i honestly feel a little bit overwhelmed going through everything because there are just so many different things you can do but it's a good type of overwhelmed just because it is such an innovative product and probably the most innovative packaging design I've ever seen. And then also within the packaging, you do get this cute little leather slip, and this also has a magnetic closure here. So when you're just taking six or you're stacking the smaller palettes, you can just do that and put it in here, which I think is also really, really cool. And I was going back and forth on how to add the most value to this video. And normally when I have a new palette, I just create three different eye looks, but I think for this palette, what's going to be the most beneficial is to do some eye swatches. So we are going to do that. But before we do that though, I am going to show you swatches of all the shades. So I have first swatched these two groups of six and then I did this one by itself because I ran out of room on my arm. But in doing so, I swatched those 12 shades and then on the bottom, I did the shimmers over a black base. So there are some satin shades in here to kind of anchor them if you don't want to reach into another palette, which is fantastic. But I did want to swatch those really beautiful reflective shimmer shades over a black base so you can really see how versatile they are and how much the black base actually changes what that shimmer shade looks like. So I will pop up those swatches and you can see across the top we have the initial shimmer shades and then on the bottom we have the shimmers over a black base. So you can see how that really, really changes things. And then I also stepped outside to show you what they would all look like in natural lighting. So you can see they're incredibly sparkly and shimmery and beautiful. 
And then getting in to the very last palette of six. So this is the more pinky purple grouping of colors. I've done the same thing with the original shades across the top and then the shimmers over a black base on the bottom. And again, also very, very reflective, shimmery, beautiful. I love this grouping especially. And then I did also step outside to show you what they look like. So I am going to zoom you in and I will swatch every shade on my eyes. And if my eyes aren't killing me at the end, I will do a look but I really just want you to see what each one looks like on the lids. So picking up that very, very first shade, and this shade is called Proud. That is so beautiful. This shade is also very, very creamy to the touch. I do just have my Alter Ego eyeshadow base down on the lid. So that shade is like a peachy green shift and I feel like you could just absolutely wear that shadow all on its own and that is a full look right there that is so 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 pretty going into the next shade which is called Rives and this one's got almost like a lime green effect to it also very very beautiful and reflective these do apply beautifully with a finger. I'm just gonna blend those edges. But that is the shade Rise and Proud. I really, really like Proud. Let me take these off and get into the next two. Okay, now going into the shade called Higher, and this one is incredibly creamy. Just putting my finger in it, I feel like there's already just such a dip in the shade. That is so pretty. It looks so orange in the pan, but when you put it on the lid, it's really something else. It's just so foiled, and I only have my Alter Ego eyeshadow base on underneath. Nothing else, but it's just so beautiful. So that is higher. And that is definitely like a bright, vibrant orange, but it also has a green shift. Then we're going into Gleaming, which is this gorgeous, gorgeous, bright green. So going in on this side, oh, this shade is special. These shades are all special, but this one is so pretty. I don't know why, but I feel like I wanna wear this one on Christmas. Obviously, I'm not trying to make them look too, too pretty because I'm just immediately taking them off, but that is the shade Gleaming, and that is probably the coolest green I have in my entire collection. Let's get into the next two. All right, next we're trying out Unapologetic and Nirvana. So Unapologetic is a satin, so this is meant to really anchor the other shades in this group of six. And I am going to apply this one with a brush because that is how I would apply it. I would probably use this one in my crease or I would use it all over the lid as a base. And any of these shades over top of Unapologetic are going to be beautiful. So obviously I got really messy with this one. It was definitely sticking to my primer because I didn't set the primer down with a powder, which I would normally do because I haven't found the shimmers needed, but this one definitely seems to need my primer to be set with the powder. But that is the shade Unapologetic and it is a satin. There is a sheen to it. Okay. And then the other side we're going in with Nirvana, which is an incredibly, incredibly creamy shimmer. Oh my goodness. And it does even feel wet applying it to the lids. And it definitely applies best, I find, if you sort of push it into the lids. And because these shimmers are so creamy, there's essentially no fallout with them, which I'm really appreciating. I was fully expecting my face makeup to be destroyed by the end of this, but so far I'm feeling okay. But that is unapologetic and Nirvana. So such a cool shade. I'm fascinated by these shades. Okay, 
Let me take these off and then we're gonna get into that blue purple sort of group. All right, now we are going into release and free. Let's go in on this side first with release. Look at that beautiful teal shift. How pretty is that? It's got like a teal, but almost a purple to it. I don't know how she's doing this. This is so pretty. Again, these shades that look white, but then when you pick them up, they have these crazy shifts. I feel like these are shades I would wear just on their own, just for a little bit of intrigue. They're so pretty. Picking up the shade Rise, it feels very almost chunky, and I noticed that when I was swatching it out. So I like to do my trick where I pick it up and I sort of warm it up between my fingers and then you get that super smooth payoff, but you're not going to get the overly flaky shade that's going to enhance texture and also just give you fallout all over your face. And it has worked beautifully for that. It's incredibly creamy, feels like it's sticking right on my lid and giving me absolutely no fallout. So that is release on this side, which I still think is so cool, and free. The next two shades are Fluid and Euphoria. So starting with Fluid, I don't do, oh my goodness, how pretty is that? Okay, I don't do eye swatches often, but this is kind of fun. My eyelids would heavily disagree, but this is fun. Oh my goodness. Just blending that edge a little bit so I don't look so crazy. Oh my goodness, look at that shade. That is giving me all of the mermaid kind of vibes. My gosh, that is such a cool shade. Okay, the other shade is Euphoria and this is a pretty purple with a blue sort of base to it. It's got flecks of pink in it too though. Okay, that is Euphoria. What a pretty, pretty purple. I can't get over how cool this shade is though. That is so cool. All right, so quick note about these blue shades, they will stain the lid. So just be careful about that. I am going into the blue satin, but because it does stain and because Unapologetic was kind of really patchy, I am going to put down a powder, uh, mostly because I don't want it to stain anymore. But I am going in with a brush to the shade Unbound. And like I said, this is the satin shade. Okay, so that is the shade Unbound. And this one is definitely going to be a beautiful, beautiful base for any of these, but it's also going to be a really great crease shade, base shade, whatever you want to use it for, it's going to be beautiful. And on the other side, we're going in with Empowered. This is another one of those incredibly creamy, wet feeling shimmers. Oh my goodness, look at that. It, this is so rich. This is like a royal purple. That is a very, very deep, deep purple. Oh my gosh, that's actually kind of jarring um, to see, but that is Unbound and Empowered. Okay, both of them a little bit too rich for me. I can't see myself reaching into those two very much, but let's get into the next group of six. All right, we are getting into the last six, which I am excited about, and so are my eyelids. We are feeling a bit of a burn, and we definitely got some staining from that blue. So even though I had a primer down and some powder, keep in mind, the blue's gonna stain. Getting in to Serenity and Dance, I am very excited for these shades because these look like shades that I'm just gonna wear all the time. So this is Serenity. Again, just looking like beautiful shades that I would pop all over the lid as a one and done. So that is Serenity. Super, super pretty. On the other side, we're going into Dance. 
and it's actually coming off super, super muted for some reason. It's still pretty though. This is also one that I would wear all the time, but it's surprisingly more muted than any of the other shades in the palette. So I tried building it a little bit more. So that is Dance and Serenity. So Dance is actually probably the easiest, simplest, most approachable shade in the palette. It is really not the most shiny at all. It's still very pretty and it's definitely shiny, but just not compared to some of the other shades. Okay, getting into the shade Joy. This looks so pretty. This is a beautiful, beautiful pink. So that is the shade Joy. Such a pretty light pink. Very, very beautiful. And the next shade is Rejoice. This is another one of those shades that feels very wet and it looks like it's going to have a pink and green almost shift. Okay, I'm not seeing any of the green from this angle. Maybe a little bit, but not much. Actually, maybe I wasn't seeing a green shift. I think maybe I was seeing a bit of a gold, which makes sense. So again, just another one of these super creamy, kind of almost sticky feeling shades that are going to go on the lids. So they're not going to have any fallout because they just immediately adhere to the lids. So beautiful. I think you can start to see that gold shift a little bit more as well. And then over here, we just have this pretty light pink. Okay, let's get into the last two shades, which are actually both satins. Okay, going in to the shade Love, which like I mentioned is a satin. And this is very, very pretty. This is going to be a beautiful shade to use in the crease or as a base. It's not too deep, it's not too rich, but it just gives just enough. So this shade is going to be a really, really pretty. And that is the shade Love. Okay, just cleaning off my brush and going in on the other side with the very last shade, which is Bliss. This is also very pretty. This little grouping of six, I can see being such a pretty combo around Valentine's Day. Okay, so we have Bliss and Love. And with that, we have tried on all of the shades. Let me take these off and then I'm going to create a really simple look and then share my final thoughts. So I am going to do a quick final look. I'm not doing anything too crazy because my eyelids are definitely feeling what I just put them through, but I am going to take the shade Unapologetic and I am going to put this on my outer corner and work it into my crease. I did reprime my lids with my Alter Ego eyeshadow base and I did put some powder down because Unapologetic was quite patchy when I just put it directly over the primer last time. I'm not expecting my blend to be perfect either just given how many times I've had to wipe my lids and reprime them. I am sure I didn't get it quite perfect but that's okay. So when you do blend out these type of shades with a fluffier brush. They are a little bit more on the sheer buildable side, so you really can use them as a great anchor shade. I like how you can take out one of these groups of six and then you still have a cover for it, but then you can pop in other mattes as you see fit. If you're traveling, whatever your needs are, you can just, you can do it with this. And I think that is so cool. So before I even put this palette on my lids. This palette impressed me with the innovation and creativity that went into the packaging alone. Just the so many different configurations you can use with this palette. It's absolutely insane. So I did Unapologetic and now I'm going into Higher. And this one I like to put all over the lid. Look how pretty that is with Unapologetic. 
my gosh, that is so beautiful. I am so glad I picked this palette up. Honestly, I heavily debated. I thought I do not need to try that. I will not get a lot of use out of something like that. But honestly, I am feeling so inspired and excited playing with this that I'm really glad I did. And I usually get a little bit sad about missing out on the Lightwork palettes anyway. Um, well, at least last year. In the years before, she had these water activated shades and I thought I will never get into that. Last year's palette, I regretted missing out on and then this year's palette, I, I tried to skip it but I just couldn't. So that is so, so pretty. I love how we have a beautiful amount of shimmer and shine to the lids but it's nothing too intense and there's no like chunky glitter involved. Okay, I'm just going to finish it up by going into this shade right here. And just bringing this one on the inner corner and then up a little bit. Slightly overlapping with higher, but not all the way. So we can really give that look some dimension. I love how that looks. Okay, doing the same thing on the other side just the right amount of depth and dimension while also being a little bit more colorful but also quite wearable in my opinion so let me pop off camera I will pop on some mascara and I will come back to share with you my final thoughts all right so here is the finished final look and I absolutely love how it turned out I love how I was able to get something quite approachable and wearable especially for me out of this palette but let me zoom you out and get into sharing my final thoughts all right so I think it's pretty clear that I have a very very high opinion of this palette so like I said I was a little bit nervous I debated on picking it up because as beautiful as it is as beautiful as these shades are I'm not a huge color wearer so am I going to get a lot of use out of this Maybe not the most, but then last year's Lightwork palette had me a little sad that I missed out on it. And then once I saw this year's palette, I really went back and forth. Again, it looks very, very colorful, very unapproachable, but I couldn't stop thinking about it. So after doing eye swatches of every single shade, there really isn't one bad shade in this palette. I think this palette is amazing. I love that we have these more satin shades down here to sort of anchor them so you really can look at this as a full palette. You can easily look at these in groups of six and know that you have a shade to anchor everything down and you don't have to reach into another palette if you don't want to. That being said, you can. You have that option and you can pop out one of these groups of six and you can pop in some mattes and then take this with you. You can do whatever you want. The possibilities with rearranging and playing with this palette are truly endless. So I already think that's fantastic. Every single one of these shades is also very, very beautiful. And looking at this from a neutral lover's point of view, where this could be a little bit more intimidating than perhaps I would like, if you just break it down and look at it in groups of six, it's a lot more palatable to me and that was really how I focused on this palette. You can jump around and take from whatever you want but for me looking at this in the groups of six makes the most sense and then even these shades up here some of the ones that just look white and then you pick them up and they are so multi-dimensional. They are so fascinating. She's got so many finishes in here. She has some of these foil shades. She has some just really intensely sparkly glittery metallics. Then we have some of these creamy shades that just sort of feel like they stick to the lids and they're just kind of wet. It's so cool. I love these shades. I love every single part of this palette. I don't love that the blue stain, but I mean... That's not uncommon, but I also don't use a lot of blues, so it's probably not going to affect me much. However, I do expect to get quite a bit of use out of this palette just because it is so much fun. And I can't wait to especially play with this full top row just wearing these shades on their own because they're so interesting and beautiful all on their own. And once again, I think Danessa Myricks is just an absolute genius. I have so many absolute favorite brands, but what really gets me about Danessa Myricks is the way that 
I feel like she's really the only truly innovative brand on the market right now. I feel like we have some of these pro brands coming out with really great products. We have some brands just trying to copy what other brands are doing and what's trending right now. But then we have Danessa Myricks, who's just out here doing whatever she feels like, just following her heart and figuring out how to be innovative in a very saturated space. And I think aside from being an incredible makeup artist, that is a brilliance all on its own. So I could talk all day about how I think she's so brilliant and innovative, but I am going to leave it there because I won't stop otherwise. And just because the last year or two I've been reviewing everything she comes out with, I am glad I hopped on this one. This is absolutely fantastic. After experiencing this palette, I will absolutely be purchasing next year's Lightwork palette too. I realize that I have indeed been missing out. Do I think this is worth $128? That is a lot of money. And if you don't have $128 to spend on makeup, then absolutely not. You can definitely get it done. You can definitely play with color for much more affordable price points. There are some incredible indie palettes that are even more shimmery and intense perhaps than these shades that will cost you less. So you can absolutely get this done for a lower price point. That being said, if you are somebody who loves color and or you're a pro makeup artist, then this could absolutely be worth $128. For me, I think this was worth the investment just in, first of all, the quality is fantastic. The shades are so beautiful. They really do fill a gap in my collection, which is hard to do when you have the collection that I do. But on top of all of that, with all of the different configurations and the way that you can change this palette, it just makes it so versatile. And I do think that justifies the price point. I still think $128 is just way too much for any makeup, but I think if anything is worth that, I would say it's this. I would tell you that this palette is actually more worth it than a Pat McGrath Mothership. I love the Motherships, but they run the exact same price point and I do think this adds more value than one of those. I love this. I can't sing its praises enough if you think that you would use something like this. I think it's fantastic. I would still recommend waiting for a Sephora sale or a Black Friday sale from Danessa Myricks to definitely save yourself a little bit, but if you want this one, you will not be disappointed because it's absolutely fantastic in every single way. I cannot say enough good things about this palette. I'm honestly shocked at how in love I am with this palette. But that is it for me today. I hope this video was helpful. I hope the eye swatches in particular were helpful. Let me know all of your thoughts down below. I love hearing from you guys so, so much. If you're new here, I hope you'll consider subscribing before you go. I do upload new videos every single week. Thank you again so very much for watching, and I will see you in my next one. Bye!